New images of 3i Atlas just dropped from different countries, and they're not showing what scientists predicted. On November 5th, several observatories released photographs of the interstellar object after its closest pass by the sun. Everyone expected a massive tail stretching across space. Instead, there's just a fuzzy ball of light. No dramatic tail whatsoever. Let's break down what these new images reveal and why it matters. As always, I'm here to report the information without bias, and you can decide what to believe. You can find the sources in my detailed articles at ufonews.co, along with in the description box below. Hey, ufologers, I'm Christina Gomez, and welcome to this episode of UFO News Updates. The R. Naves Observatory in Spain, the Virtual Telescope Project in Italy, and the Tianwen-1 Mars Orbiter in China released photographs showing the same thing. A compact fuzzy ball of light, no massive cloud of gas, and no dust streaming from the sun no cometary tail at all. And this is not what anyone predicted. When 3i Atlas passed perihelion on October 29th, it became within 203 million kilometers of the sun. At that distance, it absorbed 770 watts of solar radiation per square meter. And that is very intense heating. For a comet, which is what 3i Atlas has been classified as, this should trigger massive outgassing. The ice on the surface should vaporize, creating a spectacular tail passing away from the sun by solar wind and radiation pressure. Dr. Avi Loeb explained what should have happened during his recent NBC interview. There should have been a, a very massive cloud of gas and dust around it uh, based on what we know about comets. In fact, we see other uh, comets in the solar system that uh, have a beautiful tail away from the sun behind them. Lemon is an excellent example. But uh, in our case of uh, Three Eye Atlas, it looks like a fuzzy ball of light. To understand how unusual this is, look at Comet Lemon. The same telescope that photographed 3i Atlas also captured images of Lemon on November 3rd. Now, Lemon displays exactly what you would expect, a clear, bright tail pointing away from the sun. This is textbook comet behavior. And this is what happens when solar radiation pushes gas and dust particles away from the comet's nucleus. But 3i Atlas, nothing comparable. Just a fuzzy glow that looks remarkably similar to how it appeared back in July, months before perihelion, which was much farther away from the sun and experiencing far less heating. The Hubble Space Telescope photographed 3i Atlas on July 21st and compared that image to the November 5th observations. And if you look, the morphology hasn't changed dramatically, yet between those dates, the object passed through the most intense heating of its entire journey through our solar system. Here's where things get a little more complex. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory released new data covering October 31st through November 4th, and that analysis detected non-gravitational acceleration. This means 3i Atlas is not just moving according to the sun's gravity, something's pushing it. Scientists measured what 3i Atlas is speeding up in two different directions. It is getting pushed away from the sun, and it's also getting pushed sideways along its path. The measurements are strong enough that scientists are confident this acceleration is real. Dr. Loeb did the math to figure out what is causing the speed up. For a comet to accelerate like this naturally, it would need to lose at least 13% of its total weight. Think of it like a balloon when you let the air out. The escaped air pushes the balloon in the opposite direction. When ice on a comet heats up and turns into gas, the escaping gas pushes the comet forward the same way. Losing 13% of its weight is a huge amount. Imagine if you lost 13% of your body weight in just a few weeks. That would be very noticeable. The same is true for a comet. When a comet loses that much material that quickly, you should see obvious signs. There should be a giant cloud of gas and dust surrounding it, and there should be a long, bright tail stretching behind it. Special instruments should detect the different gases being released, but we're not seeing any of that. Now stick with me because there's still so much more that we need to unpack here and it only, it only gets stranger. So we should have seen it break up or at the very least disintegrate to a, a very dense and massive cloud of 
Gazan dust that is pushed away from the sun by the solar radiation and the solar uh, wind. But we don't see that. So the question is, what's going on? One possibility is that what evaporates from it are uh, fragments of ice, and they get vaporized by sunlight before they have a chance to turn around and show up as a mm. plume of uh, of glow behind it away from the sun that's one possible interpretation but otherwise i just don't know what to make of it now congresswoman anna paulina luna who has been actively engaging with this topic tweeted on november 5th that she finally spoke with nasa once the government shutdown ends, they will release high-resolution images captured by the high-rise camera aboard the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. This 50-centimeter aperture camera achieved a spatial resolution of approximately 30 kilometers per pixel when 3i Atlas passed within 29 million kilometers of Mars on October 3rd. And the high-rise images look something like this. But there's more to this. China's National Space Administration already released images from their Tianyuan-1 Mars orbiter, taken at a distance of 28.96 million kilometers. The high-resolution image camera on that spacecraft has a slightly smaller aperture, proving somewhat lower resolution than the high-rise. Now, those images show the nucleus and surrounding comma spanning several thousand kilometers. Isn't it kind of crazy how the United States is falling behind on this? The good news, however, is that we will get more data. On December 19th, just six days before Christmas, 3i Atlas will make its closest approach to Earth, and this will provide the best observation opportunity yet. Dr. Loeb has also mentioned that spectroscopic observations from the Webb Space Telescope could reveal the interior composition of 3i Atlas, not just its surface layers, and that data could finally answer whether this is an unusual but natural comet from an alien stellar environment or something requiring a different explanation entirely. From an object like, like 3i Atlas, what can it teach us about areas that are far, far away? Well, that is, that's a great question because the answer is we don't know until we find out what it has to tell us. Because, the, you know, science is about unraveling the stories of nature, and these objects from outside our solar system have a story to tell. No matter what 3i Atlas turns out to be, it keeps breaking the rules. Avi Loeb has documented 10 strange features that set it apart from every other comet we've ever studied. Its path lines up almost perfectly with where other planets orbit, which only has a 0.2% chance of happening randomly. Back in July and August, it shot material toward the sun instead of away from it, the opposite of normal behavior. It's massive, weighing 1 million times more than that of a Muamua, and a thousand times more than Borisov, yet it moves faster than both. Its time brought it near Mars, Venus, and Jupiter while staying hidden from Earth at the critical moment, with just a 0.005% probability. And the chemistry is equally odd. The gases contain far more nickel than iron, similar to manufactured metal alloys rather than natural space rock, with a nickel to cyanide ratio orders to magnitude higher than any known comet. Each of these details alone might be dismissed, but together they look like it's something completely out of the ordinary. But most interestingly, uh, there was a deviation from the trajectory that it should have taken if uh, its path was uh, shaped by gravity alone. So there was some non-gravitational acceleration that it exhibited. If it's a natural comet, that is a consequence of it getting evaporated. And I did a simple calculation that showed that uh, it must have lost uh, at least uh, a tenth of its mass uh, in that process in order to get the reported level of acceleration. Uh, and that that is a substantial fraction of its mass. It's most likely even 20%. Uh, that's just a lower limit. The coming weeks will be very critical. You had the December observations, the release of high-resolution Mars images, the potential web telescope spectroscopy could provide the data needed to resolve this mystery. We are watching an active scientific investigation unfold in real time. 
What do you think is going on with this object? Natural comment with bizarre characteristics or something else entirely? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm Christina Gomez and that is it for this episode. I will see you again today at 2.30 p.m. PST for Mysteries with a History. Be safe and remember, keep your eyes on the skies. Enjoyed today's show hit that like button and if you're not subscribed what are you waiting for hit the notification bell as i do daily ufo news and updates fresh uap stories government disclosures and breaking developments land here every single day